Welcome to Creatives in Quarantine. I'm Tawana Floyd, your host. This week, I talk with multi-hyphenate artist Dion Ordain. Dion's most notably known as an extraordinary actor, and most recently, a financial empowerment coach for creatives. We delve deep into her background growing up in Montserrat, and we talk about her master's in public budgeting. Here's Dion. It's not like I've known you. Okay. That's how spirits be sometimes. <laughs> yeah. We have. Then you my whole life. But go ahead. Right. Shout out to JJ Johnson. You know what? I need to call JJ. You know what? Mm-hmm. How about I'm going to add him to the list? Shout out to JJ Johnson, who is in the DMV area. And he was in LA and reached out to his LA based friends. And so me and Don, me, me and Dion, excuse me, me and Dion met through JJ at a restaurant. And then I was, and then we found out we're both from the Bronx, New Yorkers, and she is from Montserrat. Yes, Montserrat. Yeah, Montserrat. Yes, I was born in Montserrat, yeah. Tiny island in the Atlantic Ocean, ruled by Her Majesty the Queen and the British, so. British West Indian, by birth, nationality, and American. Right, all the other things. You have dual citizenship. I do, I have two passports. That is a blessing. Get at me, guys. You That's know, I'm right. still on the market. That's right. She could work both both territories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so then what are you most known for create creatively? Because we all have many outlets, creative outlets, but um and wait, so just piggyback off of what you said. Yeah. Shout out to us actually showing up to JJ's invite. Cause you know when you come like from the East Coast to your meet up with your LA friends and then your LA friends like, I'm not going nowhere. Not going so nowhere. shout out to JJ and us for actually showing up. Right. Because you know, that's huge. Especially depending on what part of town it's in. And and I think it was like rush hour too. So Is it raining? Is the sun too bright? Right. If it's raining, forget it. <laughs> Creatively, what am I most known for? Um, that's a great question. I, I think for if someone looks me up or someone know who knows me, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. So, what's this? Uh, <laughs> I'm an actor. That's right. I'm an actor. I've been an actor for in the United States for for two decades, just about. And so I'm most known for my my television work, film work, um, theater, and commercial and modeling. That's right. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, but probably the most popular stuff is is film and TV because I'll get the the text message or the video. It's like I just seen you. I was binge watching something. Right. Like I got some of those this week. Like someone's just catching up on the wire, and they're like, "This show is so good." And you're in it. You got good work. And I'm like, yes. What season? I just, I just, I think I'm watching The Wire for the third or fourth time now. But this, not since I've known you. This is the first time I'm watching it since I've known you. I'm only on season Oh. Two. So it's the season where, like, they were, um, it was a lot with the, the, the homeless people were getting yes. okay. killed. And yeah. And so the social worker that Dominic West encounters one time when he goes to the shelter. Yeah. He's moi. Two episodes. Oh, okay. I'm glad I know this now so I don't have to scream. I'm probably still going to scream, but... I have my full afro. Oh, wow. With, with multiple colors in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my hair was very different. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's going to be the film and TV stuff. Or I'll, I'll even get mistaken because I have a couple doppelgangers and like, did I see you at the end of such and such? I'm like, no, but shout out to her. Right. You know? So, yeah. And so you said you said for two decades in the states. So you were acting yeah. in Montserrat. Well. Um, I was a child model. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had, yeah. She is full of personality, so that does not <laughs> <laughs> surprise me at all. Um, and in Montserrat, we would, you know, we had to dance and perform. Not like we were made to dance and perform, perform but it like you know, like in a work camp or something. Uh-huh. No, it was part of the curriculum. It's just part. <laughs> We need to start over now. So it, it's part of the curriculum. And then when I came to the, when I emigrated to the United States in elementary school, I went to a performing arts elementary school, um, just a all around well-rounded arts school. So we would compete every year, like full on, like costumes, 
dance competitions. It was intense. Um, and we'd also go to, you know, we saw, I saw Barishnikov perform. I've gone to the opera. Like just, yeah, it was, I've been an artist all my life. Yeah. But I, I think I finally admitted to it 20 years ago. Okay, great. And was, was your family um, supportive of you of becoming an actor? Yeah. Right. No, that's not a real job. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. Especially when you're West Indian. I'm sorry. That's, that's why I asked that question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, so it, let's say this, you know, my dad, my dad's side of the family is very creative. It's like my dad plays saxophone, he plays, you know, other instruments. Um, so I, I, I was in, you know, all city high school marching band in New York. I marched in the Thanksgiving day parade. I modeled, I performed poetry. I wrote, I was, I was a storytelling, com I was a competitive storyteller as an elementary school student. I would memorize entire children's stories and retell them for competition. Um, I knew Latin. You no longer know Latin? Barely. I, mean, I had to study it to, yeah. like, once you know Latin, you know the definition of every word. So right. I, had, it was, I guess it was Latin roots or whatever yeah. that was. I yeah. don't know. It yeah. was an elementary school. Mm -hmm. So, but it was never to pursue art. Like, I'm going to go to high school and, like, be in musical theater. It was like, no, you can do this thing on the side you know, as well as your athletics, but you're gonna like go and study and get a good degree, degrees and get a good job. Right. And then? So I have a bachelor's and a master's and I'm a an, an full-time actor and an entrepreneur. Okay. <laughs> so I did all of that. A master's in, in what areas? Um, I have a master's in public administration uh, with a focus on technology and information management, management and public budgeting from the top school in the country for that degree, which is Syracuse University Maxwell School of, I think it's still public administration and public affairs or something like that, but like, yeah, so. That's great because that, all of that still serves as an actor, the business side of things, so. Right, right, exactly, so. And yeah. then technology. And so, so you grew up with all of these creative things that you were outlets that you were doing, and and so what are you doing currently? Because you still have lots of creative outlets. <laughs> what else should we know you for? <laughs> um, what else? Let's see. I am currently well. My my training in grad school was budget. I I, I was one of the few people that decided I would, they were going to become a budget analyst, mm -hmm. which I swore I would never do because. I swear on my microeconomics 101 book, <laughs> that I took public budgeting twice in grad school, right? I was in an accelerate, accelerated one year program and Lloyd Blanchard, my, one of my teachers at the time who ended up being a head, the head of the SBA for a while, amazing black man. He was like, three of y'all coming out of here gonna be budget analysts. I was like, that is not gonna be me. I hate this class. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I became a budget analyst. And so I love numbers. I love crunching numbers. I love, I, I just, I'm a very analytical person. My, my, my focus was technology and information management and budgeting. So project management, information systems, money, all of that stuff, tech, not, tech and info and, and money. So translate that into being an actor and not having stability I had to really focus in on how am I going to make money how am I going to manage that and I had to get creative and translating that from corporate to show business right because it's still business yeah. and that got that born into me figuring out how to juggle all of the crazy stuff survival jobs being an actor while sometimes working full-time while doing a show while being in rehearsal while traveling from dc to philly to pittsburgh to new york to boston to richmond to north carolina like juggling all of that mm -hmm. i became very proficient in managing my money or lack thereof mm -hmm. or just having a ton of insight around that mm -hmm. fast forward into the last three years three to four years uh work uh, working on my financial wellness, right? Um, it opened up a space for me to do that work um, as a financial empowerment or money coach. So I work with a company called Abundance Bound and we work with uh, creatives and 
and helping them build thriving thriving lives you know through their finances and and seeing seeing themselves as thriving artists versus starving artists and i probably didn't like encapsulate that correctly but that's that's yeah i work for um miata idoga who is the national financial consultant for the actors fund which is a social service organization that serves everyone in entertainment so this is i'm a two-year graduate uh, of that program the financial wellness program um, that deals with, of course, the practical side of things, but also the psychological and mindset mm. side of, of earning as an artist. Right. Um, and then there was an opportunity to apply for a job, and I did. And it's, but it's more, it's, it's not just a job for me. It's a way of, of life in this, in the sense of how how it shifted so much for me. And the, it starts with the money, but it's really how I show up in one place is how I show up everywhere. And so in starting with the money, I was able to look at every place in my life. Um, and this is one area that I chose to go big in. So working as a financial empowerment or money coach. Um, and then so I, I do that. I, I'm a course facilitator. And then I also have a business uh, that is in the, um, the infant stages, or as our coach likes to say, I'm in the kitten stage <laughs> of my entrepreneurial journey. Um, where I um, coach folks yeah. as an artist or whoever in using Mint. Um, so I have proficiency in Mint. I've used Mint, which is a tracking software. It's free budgeting software from Intuit. And Intuit houses, you know, Mint, Quicken, and QuickBooks. And I've used Mint. I, I graduated from a s- spreadsheet. Shout out to Ayaku Freeman, who we were backstage at the green room at Folger Theater doing Much Ado About Nothing, directed by Timothy Douglas. And no, was it Much Ado? Yeah, yeah. Um, And she's like, why are you using a spreadsheet? Like I had a spreadsheet, a tab for every month, a row for every day, a column for every category. She's like, you can just use Mint. It's like a light had shone down. What's Mint? Right. Giving me this (laughs) blessing (laughs) And that was 15 years ago, and I never looked back. So I didn't know Mint was around that long. It just came on my radar probably in the past six years. Wow. It, yeah, it's been a while. And so now they've removed all of my data except for ago, which makes me a little upset. But I, I could let it go. You know, I had to, they Marie kondo it for me. I understand. So... <laughs> Yeah. So the mint coaching business, you know, which is, you know, like actor money power that, you know, just really showing folks that there's a lot of, they have a lot of power around their money. They're not in a place. So because, you know, it's something where we feel like we don't have a lot of power on our, around our earnings. So, um, and what else do I do creatively? Well, talk about that a little bit, because if there's somebody who works a nine to five, they don't, they probably don't recognize that there's a difference um, between people who work nine to five who have weekly or biweekly income versus the artists whose income is, is sporadic. Yeah, very sporadic. Um, so, yeah, yeah there is a, there's a huge difference because there's not that consistency, that, um, that knowing of uh, every two weeks I get this. Well, right now, a lot of us have been thrown into the instability of the income, right? Yeah whether or not you have a nine to five or a a more entrepreneurial career, Mm -hmm. but with, with artists or with those that are not, that, that do not earn on a cycle, a predictable cycle. um, It's challenging. It's, it's, it feels, it can be challenging to forecast or budget or, you know, like, how do I save for retirement? What kind of retirement do I need? And so those are the things that um, I've been trained in and that, Abundance Bound teaches, it's like, how do you design for yourself a stable foundation based on you, based on what you earn and what you spend? It's not a cookie cutter approach. It's not a a across the board percentage approach. Like, you know, this is 100% of your income to take this much for this, make this much for that. If you're spending this much on this, that's wrong. It's very much, we give you permission to, and empower you to do what it is that fits you. If your number is 4,000, then that's your number. 
yeah. but we start with allowing you to be in the space of this is what it is as opposed to like, oh, you shouldn't be spending that much on your housing or you shouldn't have a credit card debt. And so, and, and so for those that are, are irregular, by looking at what you spend and what you earn, there's patterns, there's patterns in everything. Yeah. And so we help you to identify the pattern because when you earn regular income, you know what the pattern is. Oh, the 15th and the 30th, I'm gonna get a check and this is where it's gonna go. Yeah. And there's still, there's still a necessity to have awareness and this type of mindset when you earn regularly, like everybody gets to, but especially for artists, it's what we can control. And that gives so much more stability and groundedness mm -hmm. in an unpredictable and unstable environment. Right. Yeah, that, that allowed me to breathe and exhale because it's, we, we get to what, like you're saying, where it's normally feels unstable and it is, but then we get to, once we learn the system, we can operate from a better space and then have more time for our creativity and showing up in the room without that heavy burden of yeah. the finances that will be like cloud around us. Yeah, it's very empowering. And, you know, we, you don't go into an audition toxic, like, yeah, that energy, yeah. like, oh my God, I need to book this right. national commercial right. because I need to pay off my student loans and I can pay off my student and I can finally be, it's like, no, you get to do all of those things now and we help you figure out what that means and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So when you go into an audition, you're like, it's cool if I book this job, but I have multiple streams of income, so yeah, be cool or whatever. <laughs> Right. It's so much a different energy, right? Because you think about the people sitting on the other side of the table, they're like, I want some of what is coming off of her. Like, yeah, like put me, you know, because it's a really about personal relationships. And if I don't feel comfortable with you to work with you and be on set with you for 10, 12, 15, 16, a month, two months, you know, in a forest somewhere, like, you're not going to get that job. Right. 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 So you want to come in like, yeah, I got, you know, I might have some debt, but I'm paying it off. Right. No one's falling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you also, you also do, or you make. I knew you was going to say Sorrel. That. I do. Sorrel and, um, and my favorite. Coquito. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. And I get, I think I shied away from mentioning it because it's right now, it's not an area that I'm looking to go big in. Um, okay. Although I know it's very it's much a micro business. Yeah. And I know it has the potential to be huge and amazing. Mm -hmm. And right now, you know, what coach has said is it's a place where I get to have fun. Right. It's seasonal. It's like seasonal. Seasonal, if I decide, you know what, I get up this morning, I'm gonna go ahead and soak some sorrel petals. And sorrel right. is basically hibiscus tea for those, right. you know, or depending on where you are, Zobo um, in certain parts of Africa, Bis Bisap, um, Roselle drink, you know, Australia, Asia, Africa, Latin America, Jamaica. So it's such a cross cultural beverage, mm -hmm. you know, and for us in the West Indies too. And it's a Christmas time lemonade right. that you can drink with or without alcohol and the health benefits are huge obviously without the alcohol so it's such it's it's tonic it's like it's like i'm making magic you know, under, understandably and it's a recipe from my grandmother's cookbook so there's just homage to my matriarchal line my mother and my grandmother and it's i, just, I mean it's love in a bottle right you know? and so i infuse it with warm spices it's it's a five-day process like it's not quick. That's why it's a labor of love. And that's why it's, it's got to be a seasonal thing because it does require so much time and care. And it's so good. Like people drink it and they're like, where can I, like, I need, I need more, yeah. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> and then the Coquito was born out of sheer boredom. I was in my dad's basement apartment in Brooklyn mm -hmm. one fall. Okay, so you know New York in the fall. Yeah. It's cold as hell. New yeah. York in a basement is just like, why? Jesus right. Why? Right. And so I was like, I need to feel toasty. I don't know. <laughs> so 
And my dad has quite the extensive um, spirit collection. So international, worldwide. And he was, he, he winters in, in St. Vincent, because my dad is um, Vincentian. He's, um, my dad is, is a, of Carib and Arawak Indian descent, as well as some of those that were brought over from India to St. Vincent and Trinidad. So I'm half Indian and half um, African-American, Caribbean, Black. And so daddy has all these spirits and I'm like a kid in a candy store, kid in a liquor store. I'm like, and so I'm also a trained bartender. So, and a self-proclaimed mixologist. So I'm like, okay, what are we going to make? So for some reason, and I love coconut and I love mango. Yes. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make coquito. And I also like punch your cream and Bailey's ice Irish cream. Okay. So so I was like a mad scientist in the kitchen. I got like five or six different Coquito recipes. And I also grew up in the Bronx. Yeah. So I'm a self-proclaimed part Puerto Rican. Same here. Same here. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, right. I had these recipes, like literally like my, like somebody asked me to do this, combine these five recipes, perfected it, fine tuned it to where it's literally liquid cake in a bottle. Woo. Woo. Yes, I need to get on that seasonal list. It has whipped cream in it. It has heavy cream in it. Mm -hmm. The amount of alcohol that I put in it makes the drink 100 proof. I put three different types of alcohol because I believe like the coconut rum highlights the coconut cream and those flavors, right? which is not in any really anybody else's recipe, but then you have the brandy, which mm -hmm. is sometimes put in by, by folks and the, the rum, you need the rum, right? Oh, yeah. And so, and sometimes depending on my travel schedule, it might have a little white Hennessy in it. Oh, okay. Oh, cause okay. you know, you only get the white Henny when you go to the Caribbean or to Europe. Right. So it just is on point, it's, it's cake. It, it's like you, it's a drink you can feel like you're eating and it's so good. And I make vegan and I make it without alcohol and, and I've tried it with and without egg. And of course there's warm spices and yeah. See, I'm glad that I asked that because then that revealed that you are a self-professed mixologist and a bartender because there's so many creative outlets that we have, although we may focus one area, but creativity, Birds right. Activity. Art is art. Art is art. Art is art. And I love to cook and I love to get creative with my cooking. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So during this quarantine, mm -hmm. um, how, how have you been able to be creative if you have? Some people have not. How have I been creative? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So when things started, right back in March, I had just come, <laughs> I had just come back from playing mass in Trinidad, as you see over my shoulder, that's my headpiece from my costume. I see it. <laughs> I see it. So what, I came what back theme? like. What was the theme? Uh, it, what was it? What was, it was um, Toast. Toast was the name of my costume section. Okay. Um, the band I jumped with shall not be named for okay. other reasons. We can discuss offline. Understood. I will not be jumping with them again. Ever. Understood. Because it makes a you difference. Know, it makes a big difference. Yeah. So, um, but in, you know, so from coming from dancing in the street and partying for two weeks, I came back and I was like, okay, you know, I had like uh, put my acting class on hold uh, at the studio I study at. I was taking a, uh, an intensive with a New York teacher, literally a teacher that was flying in from New York. I missed the first two classes because I was in Trinidad. Yeah. But I was like, well, that's okay. I'll get in it in with other stuff. And so everything got cut short. And so we had done some classes online and I would, I signed up for all the free classes, like comedy class and this and that. Mm -hmm. And it was too much. Oof. Everything was, was here on the Zoom. And I was spending way too much time online. So I, I pulled back from everything. I pulled back from all of the uh, acting creative stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I was honestly just focusing in on like financial triage, yeah. um, <laughs> creatively figuring out how to get through the unemployment. Yes. <laughs> um, 
you know, what else? Just like how, figuring out when to go and try to get certain staple items and, you know, like, okay, I had, I had ordered a bunch of PPE prior to everything because of, um, I do, I work as a task rabbit. So, and task rabbit is a gig economy platform where I do organizing, I do accounting help, packing and unpacking some like design type things, uh, furniture assembly. Mm -hmm. And so I had, I had a bunch of masks for that cause I have dust allergies. So mm. Okay. I was I was already good on that, but like going to Costco and stocking up. So anyway, I hadn't done a lot of, of I wasn't being creative. Like I wasn't even making sorrel and coquito and that would have been a perfect time. It was honestly in the first part of things, I just, I had a lot of um, anxiety, which I never had before, right? I, 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 there is some like high performing anxiety, but that's something I'm working on and aware of. But like every day, like, like like real anxiety that I've heard my friends talk about, that was very present for me. So I had to really spend time getting back in touch with myself and uh, just working with my spiritual team and grounding myself and figuring out how to move my energy in the world energy. So yeah. it was just about, I don't know what that word is, but that was where I think my creativity lied for the most part is, was in the healing side of things. It wasn't in anything that I was doing and putting out into the world. Like I, you know, I did some of the, like, you know, casting in the time of Corona was doing a lot of those open calls and those things. So I was doing a lot of that, right. but honestly, even that I, some of the stuff, I just was like, you know what, I'm not making this deadline today because I'm not, I it was, it was so much it was new and yeah. a lot was put on like and I don't want to make it sound like oh my god it was so hard it was just like oh wow I, there's so much uncertainty and now I I like still having to act but like it's I don't know how to explain it but it took all of my strength and might and artistic power to just be like, okay, I'm gonna set up the lights, I'm gonna put up the backdrop, I'm gonna do the thing. And I, there were days I just stayed in bed until two o'clock in the afternoon. That's right, yeah. Um, I've talked to a couple of actors so far and I've, in some form or another, this has come up. And um, yeah, it's basically, it, it's work that we just were not used to doing because typically we just show up and all the production stuff is there and we just present this, this uh, our our side of the story or narrative or whatever the case may be, but now we're here trying to set up the lights, set up the backdrops, run the camera, get the sound right, do edit. So, and then on top of we're in a pandemic, not knowing what's going to happen or whatever, and then the energy of the world. So, yeah, to to be in bed till two o'clock is the norm. Yeah, I did a couple Zoom calls while I'm in bed. Actually, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I mean, there were coaching calls with Christine, so it wasn't right. like, you know. Hey, right. And, and then I think, you know, because creatives are, are more um, empathetic and we feel much deeper than most people, mainly because it's our job as uh, one, one of my um, uh, interviews, Nidra said, the excavation that we have to do to be open and aware for, for these things is um, makes us more open. So then we feel more than we even want to. Yeah, I, and I'm, that's one of my superpowers, I suppose, is I feel a lot, like I do not watch the news. I do not yeah. engage in- Same. Watch I watch the news. Yeah. It's like, I, I could just look at a photo and it's like, ugh. So I'm very, very protective of my energetic space in that way and what I allow in. Um, and so it, yeah, that Zoom, Zoom is, it's a lot of, it's a portal that's pulling, I feel, right. you know? And so this is my second Zoom call today. Yeah. You know, and so I, but I wasn't even aware because I was like, yeah, let's just Zoom it. Let's just do it. And 
Yeah. It's a big pull. So then you're Zooming, you're doing readings on Zoom, you're auditioning on Zoom, you're calling back on Zoom, you're doing self tapes, you right. know, the editing and all like, like that was something I was used to. But yeah, it's, it was, it's, it, and it still is. It's, it's, there's so, we're running the session, like you said, we're producing the session, we're acting in the session. It, all, of, all of the parts are now handled by one person. And prayerfully, you have somebody helping you tape. Yeah, right. Or say the other lines. Oh, I booked a job from recording myself and reading against myself in my lines. So here, right. So when I hear somebody say, "Well, we re we prefer that you not re record yourself," and I'm like, "If that's what I got, that's what it's going to be." You gonna you gonna get this? You gonna you gonna get the self tape? <laughs> and you disregard my voice on the other side. <laughs> Literally, I've had those moments where I was just like, you know what? There it is. It's that's done. Funny. Yeah, I'm walking away. <laughs> I, I think, you know, with all of this gone are the days of 40 takes for a self-tape. Because when the self-tape first came on the scene, whew, it was like 40, 75, well, maybe not 75, but still it was an exorbitant amount of takes mm -hmm. that, and then finally you just like, I don't know which one is good because now I'm dizzy. And now that's not the case anymore. It's like, I'm gonna do these three takes, sometimes one. And a max is two. That's right. If I'm feeling hella generous, right. I'll probably do it four times. But honestly, I'm a one take wonder on these self tapes. I'm like, this, exactly. is what, this is what you get. That's right. We doing this work behind the scenes so that we can just lay into this right quick and then break this whole thing down or turn the lights out and go sit down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm like, oh, Dion, you should like be so much more dedicated to this. Like, this is what you do. This is why you do what you do. And I'm just like, you know, I don't got it today. Today, I don't have the energy. I might've had it yesterday. And there's some days and it's not a complaint. Like one day I had a call back and it was a fitness call back. Right. And I'm doing like, you know, shoulder touches while in the plank position. And the, the director is directing the session. He's like, all right, I'm gonna need you to drop the camera to two feet. Like it is an active dropping the camera two feet up to above the ground, getting into position, fix tilt, like full on. Yeah. Full on. Then I had to tape something that was due that day for a whole different brand. Right. And I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am, and I'm also like, wow, I did not know that it would be this intense. Yeah. So right. I show up the best I can. I heard, um, I was watching an interview with Amanda Seals, who just did the, uh, the BET Awards in her house by herself because the crew, um, one of the members of the crew that were going to be in there had gotten um, tested positive for COVID. So then they had to get rid of the entire crew because it was so close to air date. And so they sent her the green screen and all this stuff. And she pretty much did that on her own. And so, and I thought this was actually one of the best. I don't usually watch the BET Awards, but I thought this was a really good one. And what she said was, which was just like music to my ears, everything that she has been doing and learning for all of her career came to this day. And she was able to execute because now do we want to do that? No, but because we've been doing this so long that you can now get to the point of one take and, and be okay with it. You have to. Yes. You have to. There, this is the season of this is what it is. This is what it is. Like there, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. So then, so with that said, um, let me see, let me get my questions. Well, you know, those, I did that. How did we get to this? We, we talked about that. And so, okay, so then here we are in quarantine. Has there, has there been any, um, anything that you've listened to or eaten or read, podcasts, food, music that gave you inspiration um, during this time? Yes. Okay. Something that I've read... Um, I'm currently going through Hal Elrod's The Miracle Morning for the second time. I listened to it once through last week, and now I'm going to go through it a second time. And that's just a great, powerful story about like personal resilience and really um, having a routine and setting your day up 
for success and being really intentional yeah. about how you, how I um, get into my day and being really clear about that. So that I, I, I love being able to integrate that into what, are, what I'm already doing. Um, I had a great opportunity to travel to the state of Oregon and be in the Bend area for a week. It's lovely and, there. The mountains, yeah. The air, the air is crisp. The air is clean. I was doing a home, I was assisting on a home install near Broken Top Mountain. So Broken Top and the Three Sisters was their backdrop okay. to the 7,000 square foot home. Mm -hmm. And stepping out onto their balcony, it was, I felt like I was teleported back into a ceremony experience. I, I, was, I was moved to tears. Yeah. Um, but I also like my, my energy is very open to nature and being in nature. So that was great to get outside of LA and experience mm -hmm. Oregon and Portland, that area. Um, I drove a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> food. What, what haven't I ate? I ate so much junk food and ice cream. Um, but what did you mention first? What was the title of it? You said Elrod? Oh. Yes, um, it's called the, um, drawing a blank. The author's name is Hal Elrod, The Miracle Morning. The Miracle Morning. Yeah, I'll That's tell you exactly good. what the title is. The Miracle Morning, um, da, 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 da. the not so, what is it? Hold on. The Miracle Morning, the not so obvious secret guaranteed to transform your life. Yeah. This is for the author, he, he died for six minutes after getting into a head on collision when he was about 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And after he came back to life, um, this is one of the things that grew out of that. But folks like Oprah and Tony Robbins and folks like that follow his, use his routine. Okay. So, um, and it was, it's, I, I came up on a quote that's in the coursework. Mind you, I've gone through this coursework as a student mm -hmm. probably three or four times, but now teaching it as a course facilitator. And I came up on the quote, I was like, this quote been in here this whole time. I didn't, but the lesson will appear. Right. My students ready. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I get that. <laughs> um, what were some of the other things? Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. That's okay. Even though I work in TV, just because I feel, you know, I don't know. There's so much other things to do with my time. Um, I know we're, we're constantly told, I don't, if an actor doesn't watch, like all these things, they bombard us and tell us what we should be doing. It's like, that doesn't work for me. I can watch an episode before the audition and get there and, right. and, and perform. Right? Um, I binge watched um, I May Destroy You last night up until the most Let me tell you something. Michaela Queen Cole. mother, Michaela. And this time, doing what she's doing is telling us straightforward that the world is changing. Because I've never seen female. like that. And she might be black. What? And, uh, and, and then she told Netflix, no, I'd like to still own my, my work. That show, the the sublime power and just the story and the, the, the voices. I mean, it is, ooh. And it's got people talking. I was, I was saying this to someone because I, uh, I, I watched the first episode and I was kind of doing stuff around the house or whatever. So because I was doing that, I wasn't immersed. So I was like, oh, what is this, blah, blah, whatever. And I got to the second episode and I was like, wait, what? So I had to sit down. <laughs> Rewatch the first episode, and then it all started to make sense. And um, and at that time, there were only five episodes, so I thought that I was done. And so I was like, mm -hmm. I mean, that that didn't. I feel like there's more to the story, but I'm still very relieved and, and feel good about how this ended. And then I was speaking to someone, and apparently there's a Facebook group uh, committed to it, and 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 it's between America and the UK, and they're like please UK do not give us any spoilers. You guys are getting it before us. So now I think I'm up to episode seven and I was waiting for it to complete so I could just really 
sit down. Yeah. And I got to go back and start over because it's so dense. The layers, the layers. If, ooh, her best friend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Ooh, oh, Terry. Oh, oh, Terry. Man, I that is so inspiring. It's so empowering, and you know, I I think something also something that I recently did was I shared some of my poetry work, um, which I'd not done ever before because I that's a space where I feel most vulnerable is in Actually, my life. Yeah. Where, um, where did you share it? On my Instagram, it was a small poem that I wrote in English and then translated into French and posted the French translation. Mm -hmm. It's probably butchered because it was Google Translate. Okay. But um, I've been writing poetry since. So I used to write poetry for my friends in relationships in junior high school. Mm -hmm. And so that's how long I've been writing poetry I have probably about 80 or 100 poems that I've written yeah and maybe they get a book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a published book when you write uh, I'm getting more comfortable with sharing my writing I think if it was between being naked on this call or sharing my poetry I'd be naked you take your clothes off right now <laughs> oh absolutely in a heartbeat in a heartbeat that's great. So I have another, I have until the end of the month, I think, or the next 30 days to share two more poems. That's something I'm working on. Okay. That's bold. That's bold. Mm -hmm. But, but if you're feeling, if you're, if you're feeling the, uh, the need to do this now, it must be because the reader is needing the message. And it also gives what I, something I read the other day was um, sometimes when we may not see the reason why we do something, but by doing it, it gives someone else permission to do it. That's true. You know, um, that's why representation matters. That's right. Um, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, because I, I, I mentioned that in someone else who I didn't even like who I know is a writer, but I guess maybe hadn't shared certain types of their writing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, like that really inspired me. So I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Um, and a quote recently that inspired me that I discovered because of you, um, you had shared in one of your stories, um, a post from the Shaolin Buddhist page, that like waterfall epic boat picture thing. And I was like, ooh. So I went to their page and a quote that, I mean, there's a bunch of things that yeah. was like, oh, wow, mm -hmm. I can see, you know, why. Uh, it was a quote that said, once you stop seeking happiness, that is when you know you're truly happy. And that, uh, that, that struck a chord with me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think you are, you have stopped seeking it? I think so. Yeah. I think I'm in a place right now where it's really me showing up for me and right. my life and and standing standing in my power, not just to the outside world, but in my own life. You know, um, for many years I've been many roles for others, and so this is the first time. In, in, in my life where I'm defining my life in my space mm -hmm. just for me. So, yeah. Time is now. Now more than ever. Yeah. Yeah. A, a divine timing for us to be in quarantine and to be at that stage and to, just to, um, to fortify it. And heal and all of this. I mean, it's, and I know a lot of people don't necessarily see it this way but this is what's supposed to be happening right now yeah yeah i agree i agree but for whatever reason if there's malintent still um the good always comes out the light always shines so even though we're in a space right now where it's not comfortable or uh, or it's terrifying or fearful for some 
then just the silver lining will always reveal itself at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we get to be still and we get to be in this place, hopefully for those of us who can, because there are essential workers and people who have to work, yeah. uh, who can't really be home at this time. But for those of us who can, then yeah. hopefully we're all finding a new way of being through this. Yeah. And just learning, I'm a huge takeaway is me learning to be still and learning to do less and do nothing mm -hmm. which is a very new space <laughs> because i'm a doer right mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah i was saying this to someone earlier um this has taught me and just as we were talking about the the one take self-tape it's taught me to do less in a smarter way mm -hmm. And then use my energy for the things like this. Like this has been really fun for me. So I'm not exhausted where when I'm watching, uh, you know, Zoom Q and A's, who I'm more out and that understanding why. But like you said, there is a pull energetically. And I think the more people that are on the call where some of them have pages of people, the more um, lethargic I'm left. Yeah, I, I was on a call last Thursday with 83 participants. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was a, a, a co-facilitator person and yeah, it's doing like when I'm facilitating, I tell my colleague and my, my boss, um, it's like doing a one woman show for 90 minutes mm -hmm. and then being on those large zoom calls. It's, it's like, you're doing a full run of a theater show. Oh, that's yeah. That's uh, yeah. Right. That's a good correlation. Mm -hmm you're on right yeah. even if your your video is off and your mic is muted there's still that engagement yeah the, like the, the camera all of that so i think and i'm trying to figure out i've like looked for ways to like ground myself or i guess selenite to keep by my computer is probably good i mean oh, i that's have a great idea that's a yeah. great idea selenite I've, I've like i've burnt sage like i'd have the sage yeah. burning continuously like as the camera's running but that can get a little smoky <laughs> um i guess i can spray sage around the aura and the mm -hmm. you know the merkaba what have you but so but yeah selenite yeah. i'm very much into crystals and plant medicine and Same here yeah i have i have one right here i don't even know i don't know what this is but um as i was passing by to grab something i was like oh let me put that on the computer and you know. yeah and at night i burn sage before we go to bed i really? smoke the place out and then i open up the window and turn the fan to let whatever whatever dark energies of the world are trying to creep in and invade mm -hmm. my dreams it's not welcome yeah i haven't staged in a while um because one of my reps is very much into spirituality so that's so great and she's like you know if you're always clearing you never give energy any opportunity to, to settle Oh, that's a good idea. So, but that was for me, like, as you know, me, Dion. So yeah. um, I've given the saging a break because I use white sage and regular sage and like white sage, blue sage, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I do still incense, incense and okay. candles and just and Florida water. <laughs> yes. Good old Florida water. <laughs> okay. Good old Florida water. <laughs> Grandma's purse. Yeah. <laughs> That is, it. is there anything that you want to share? Any upcoming projects or anything that you'd like to share? Um, an eye out for? I do have upcoming projects, okay. but I've also signed an NDA. Well, then we will see how they unfold when these <laughs> roll out. Uh, I'm trying to think. What, well, there is the movie that I did in June. We were one of the first three productions to come out once things had opened up. Okay. <clears throat> called Manifest West. Mm -hmm. and so that should be coming soon, I guess, in the next 30 to 60 days. Okay. So I'm excited about that um, and the role that I, I have in it um, and the, the people that I was able to work with. So um, what else? Oh, I'm launching my business, excuse me, in, in early fall. Let's say that. Uh, yeah. My mint coaching business will be launched officially. Um, I do have a, a, a clothing a brand, well, an empowerment brand. Mm -hmm. um, called Booked and Blessed that will be launching early fall as well Wonderful. <laughs> with, uh, with a fellow creative and, and actor and my business partner. Um, 
And I think that's all for now. You know, that's good. That's good enough. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for thanks for chatting with me, Dia. You're welcome. This was awesome. Thank you. I had a good time. Yes. Next time. Thank you for watching Creatives in Quarantine. You can catch Dion on Instagram for her latest projects. She works the most interesting projects. You'll want to follow her. And if you liked what you saw here, you learned something new, subscribe. See you next time. Bye.